Better known today by just her first name, Selena Quintanilla Perez is the undisputed queen of Tejano music. Tragically, she was murdered on March 31, 1995, by her former fan club president and friend, Yolanda Saldivar. Here are the details leading up to and following the murder. It was 1991 when Yolanda Saldivar first saw Selena Quintinilla perform in person, as written by journalist Maria Celeste Araras. In her book, Selena's Secret, the revealing story behind her tragic death, apparently Saldivar, who was a 30-year-old registered nurse, wasn't even a fan when she attended that first concert in San Antonio. A country music fan, the nurse would only attend the Tejano Stars show because of an invite from her niece. But once Saldivar witnessed Selena his onstage magic, she was hooked. When the memorable show ended, Saldivar was excited to buy some merchandise to commemorate the night. At the time, though, there were no official products on sale, leading the new fan to come up with the idea of creating an official fan club. Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's father, says he received 15 calls from Saldivar, while the nurse maintains she only called three times. The end result was that Saldivar was given permission to found and become president of the Selena fan club in June 1991, with her main contact being Suzette Quintanilla, Selena's older sister. Yolanda Saldivar would not actually meet Selena until six months later, in December. Under Yolanda Saldivar's leadership, the Selena fan club expanded quickly, growing to thousands of members in just a few years, according to biography. As Saldivar worked and proved her usefulness, the president of the Selena fan club wormed her way further into Selena and the Quintinillas' families' lives. As told by Texas Monthly, she would constantly be at Selena's side when the singer was in or near San Antonio, acting as, quote, Selena's eyes and ears. Impressed by the fan club president's dedication, the Quintinillas eventually would entrust Saldivar with more responsibilities. Over the next few years, the former nurse's life came to completely revolve around Selena. From having control over the star's business checking accounts to being given a key to Selena and her husband's home, Saldivar was fully a part of the Tejano superstar's inner circle. Yolanda Saldivar became someone Selena trusted, someone she confided in and took advice from. As written by D Magazine, Selena talked warmly of her friend, saying, Yolanda was the one who encouraged me to go to college. With a lifelong interest in fashion and beauty, it was only a matter of time until Selena had a go at creating her own clothing line. According to Bustle, the music icon was at the peak of her career, having just won her first Grammy Award the year before for Best Mexican American Album, when she opened two Selena Etc. boutiques in Corpus Christi and San Antonio in 1994. The stores were must-go spots for all Selena fans, selling Selena memorabilia and clothes, some of which were designed by Selena herself while also offering salon services. And the appointed manager trusted to handle these boutiques? You guessed it, Yolanda Saldivar. It was around the time of Saldivar's promotion that her behavior started to become troubling. As written in Selena's Secret, boutique employees claimed that Saldivar was possessive over Selena and, quote, constantly looking for ways to keep her away from others. The Washington Post reported on how Martin Gomez, the fashion designer for Selena's boutique clothing line, who worked alongside Saldivar for eight months, quit his role solely because he couldn't stand working with the vindictive manager any longer. Even at home, Saldivar's obsession with Selena was a problem, with the roommate moving out after two weeks due to being, quote, spooked by the shrine Saldivar had turned the apartment into, according to Texas Monthly. Despite repeated instances of Saldivar's troubling attitude, the young and trusting Selena had, quote, loyally defended Saldivar when anyone criticized her, according to the Washington Post. That is, until the singer's father was made aware of some suspicious behavior. In January 1995, Abraham Quintinilla was informed of an issue with the fan club. Members were complaining that they'd never received any of the merchandise they were promised, despite sending in their $22, as reported by Texas Monthly. Before telling Selena, Abraham started doing some quiet digging. As D Magazine writes, several signs that Saldivar was embezzling money from the fan club and boutiques were uncovered. From unpaid bills to forged checks that Saldivar had written to herself and her family. On top of all that, it turned out that Saldivar had a history of similar behavior. She was once accused of embezzling funds from a previous employer and had defaulted on a student loan. The woman, who had obsessively dedicated her life to Selena, was on her way to being kicked right out of it. 
On March 9, 1995, Selena, her father Abraham, and her sister Suzette confronted Saldivar about her suspicious accounting. Given only unsatisfactory excuses, the Quintanillas concluded that they could no longer trust Saldivar and relieved her of her duties. When she tried to show up to work the next day, Abraham kicked her out. The whole ordeal apparently pushed her to extreme measures. The very next day, March 11th, Saldivar purchased a weapon, and on the 13th, after a background check, the newly fired manager was in possession of a 38 caliber pistol, according to biography. Despite her firing, Saldivar was able to obtain some of Selena's important financial records and over the next few weeks would effectively use them as leverage to stall her termination. On March 15th, Selena went with her husband, Chris Perez, to meet up with Saldivar and collect the missing records. The meeting was bizarre, with Saldivar returning only some of the documents and also showing off her new gun to Selena, which she claimed was for protection. Unruffled, the Tejano star simply told her to return it while suggesting that Saldivar could perhaps manage her upcoming stores in Mexico. The meeting seemed to have calmed Saldivar some because the gun was brought back to the store soon after. Despite the situation having been somewhat de-escalated, Saldivar went back to the gun store and repurchased the 38 caliber weapon on March 26, according to UPI. Still in possession of important financial documents, Saldivar asked for Selena to come alone to her room at the Days Inn to get the documents on the night of March 30th. Smartly, Selena came with her husband, who waited outside while the two women talked in room 158. Handing the records over, Saldivar mentioned some shocking news to Selena. Yolanda had told Selena that on her last trip to Mexico that she had been raped. She then asked to be taken to the hospital because of excessive bleeding. At the same time, the singer noticed that there were still documents missing. Another trip to the Days Inn was arranged for the next morning, but this time, Selena would go alone. On the morning of March 31, 1995, the Queen of Tejano Music met up with Saldivar again. Tension between the two seemed to start at the hospital, where Selena called Saldivar out for lying about how much she was bleeding and showed signs of distrust. Ultimately, the hospital was unable to perform the exam needed to determine whether Saldivar had been assaulted, and the two women returned back to room 158. Upon returning from the hospital, Selena and Saldivar begin heatedly exchanging words. Once again, Selena asked for her documents back, apparently trying to officially end their professional relationship, according to Texas Monthly. In response, Saldivar demanded that Selena return a ring she was once gifted by her employees. But as the singer was pulling off the ring, the other woman was pulling out her gun. Selena had her back to Saldivar when she was shot at 11.48 a.m. As reported by Yahoo, a maid heard Saldivar scream as Selena frantically ran out of the room bleeding. As described by D Magazine, the bullet hit a major artery, went through her right lung, and exited the singer's chest. Stumbling into the lobby, Selena collapsed on the floor and begged the workers to lock the door, quote, because she'll shoot me again. Asked who shot her, Selena uttered her last words before passing out, the ring still in her hand. Yolanda, room 158. She was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance, but the damage from the bullet had caused so much blood loss that she was clinically brain dead by the time she arrived. Despite heroic efforts to save Selena, the 23-year-old Queen of Tejano Music was tragically pronounced dead at 1.05 p.m. While Selena was dying at the hospital, Saldivar was still at the Days Inn parking lot. As reported by the Washington Post, right after the shooting, a hysterical Saldivar sat in her red pickup truck with her gun to her head, threatening to kill herself. The former fan club president engaged in a nine and a half hour standoff with the police, with lead negotiator Larry Rucker Young, quote, on the phone with her for seven and a half hours as he told A&E Real Crime. Amid cries of wanting to take her own life and claims that Selena's father was responsible for the shooting, Saldivar's main request to the negotiator was, quote, to hear what was going on with Selena, her condition. Sensing her volatile state, Young decided against telling Saldivar that Selena had died and instead focused on getting her to put the gun away and surrender to the police. She wanted someone to hear her story, that they are best friends, that she loves Selena, she admires Selena, she would do anything for her. Hours later, Yolanda Saldivar was finally arrested. The death of the young Selena shocked the nation. 
with thousands of fans in countless cities holding candlelight vigils that very night. Her music was played all over Spanish-language radio, with fans calling in to cry and express their grief over the loss of the Tejano star and cultural icon. As told by Texas Monthly, dances at Tejano venues were called off in cities across Texas. On Monday, April 3rd, a public viewing was held, with thousands of fans lining up since the early morning to pay their respects and see Selena's closed casket, surrounded by 5,000 of her favorite white roses. Soon, though, rumors started up, suggesting that Selena was not actually in the casket and that the whole thing was actually a publicity stunt. To shut down any doubts, the Quintiniers opened her casket about an hour before visitation ended that evening. With it open, it was clear that it was Selena's body, as Texas Monthly wrote. Her hands, folded across her chest, clutched a single red rose. By 10, when the doors finally closed, almost 60,000 people had paid their respects. In October 1995, after just two hours of deliberation by the jury, Yolanda Saldivar was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to a maximum of life in prison with no opportunity for parole until March 2025 at the earliest. She has since spent her days in Gatesville, Texas at a maximum security women's prison called Mountain View Unit. Despite her conviction, Saldivar had always insisted that the entire shooting was an accident. In her version of events, it was Saldivar who was trying to end the professional relationship with Selena, and the Tejano star begged her not to quit. Saldivar claims that she was holding the gun to her own head, threatening to kill herself if Selena didn't leave, when she accidentally fired the gun at Selena while she was gesturing toward the door. Even after more than two decades in prison, Saldivar has stuck by this story, even requesting a new trial, and being dismissed as recently as in 2019. I hold in my hand here 50 pages of case summary, the list of times since her conviction that something has been filed on her behalf. Selena, the film, hit theaters in 1997, two years after the singer's death. While it was produced by Selena's family themselves, there were many who felt that it was too rushed. This included Salma Hayek, who was offered the title role shortly after the singer's death but turned it down because she felt it was too early. According to Oprah Daly, she said, It was a little bit distasteful. In the documentary, The Making of Selena, 10 years later, though, the makers of the movie, including the Quintanilla family, clarified that the film was meant to shut down falsities before they had a chance to take hold. Actor Edward James Olmos explained that in the 15 months between Selena's death and the filming of the movie, there were already, quote, eight books, three documentaries, and two major motion pictures in production, and they were doing it all without the permission of the family. The press was also putting out, quote, hurtful gossip about Selena, and the family knew that being quick to make the movie would mean being quick to end the negativity. As Selena's brother put it, what we didn't want to happen was to have a misrepresentation of a great artist like Selena and a family member and a family and a culture. And so it kind of forced the family to have to make a hard decision, which was making the movie. While Selena's rise to superstardom was tragically cut short, decades after her death, she is still being recognized for her major contributions as an artist. She has continued to sell millions of albums with her posthumous crossover album, Dreaming of You, still topping the list of best-selling Latin albums in the United States, and a more prohibido remaining in the top five, according to Billboard. In 2017, Selena was given her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and at the 2021 Grammys, she was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Her influence on music and culture can be seen in the careers of modern stars like Jennifer Lopez or on major murals and art pieces, with movies, TV shows, and fashion and beauty collaborations sharing her legacy. The musical icon's impact continues to transcend generations and cultures even today.